Revelations of a Reflection. She's standing by a mirror, but today is not yesterday's same. Not criticizing and demeaning her reflection. Just acknowledging and silently going through her tall frame. Disregarding her flaws and condescending with her utter imperfection. Today, there is no voice in her head telling her she's not pretty. Reminding her of her faults, discouraging her already troubled heart. You ain't worth it. You won't look good in that till she's full of self-pity. She pulls it together, but melancholic and bleak, that's how her day starts. But today, she cuts off these devilish thoughts, seeing angles of her stature that she never saw before. Letting loose of those insecurities and keeping her self-esteem taut as she gets ready for the day, staring ahead rather than the floor. A smile crosses her face, her eyes widen at the sight of this long-lost smile with dimples on both cheeks. Eyebrows rise, eyes glisten, and teeth flash bright. As she cuts off these evil sounds, she hears a different one speak. Never mind your imperfections, just look at that smile. Understand it, you have been blinded for so long. Her once monotonous movements are now graceful and agile. Finally, she dared to refute the condemning sounds and prove them wrong. Her smile... Her smile fades slightly, but she maintains it with a happy thought of having faithful friends who rescue her from the turbulent waves of depression. So today, that smile will never fade. In frowning, she will not be caught. Today, she is in charge. Today, she makes a strong impression. This young woman now putting on her best jewels, chandelier earrings, a perfectly matched bracelet, and a gemstone ring. No match to this pure embodiment, her rivals look like such fools. No match to this pure embodiment, her rivals look like such fools. The sounds she hears in her ears now are those of guitar strings. A little bit of perfume here and there. The aroma of sweet roses deepens her dimples. Throwing on her shoes, a rose-colored pair. The look is now complete, undoubtedly beautiful, yet simple. Yesterday, she was insecure. Around her heart, she built high walls. But today, she's on top of the world. Guess now she'll be ready when love calls. A perfectly imperfect creature just bloomed out of this teenage girl. I chose the topic of low self-esteem because it's common in all of us. I mean, seriously, how many of you here can absolutely say that they are completely content with the way that they are. Not many. So, self-esteem. What is this two-phrased word that has us all baffled? It is some sort of judgment as well as an attitude that we have towards ourselves. Self-esteem, as described by the psychotherapist and author, Nathalian Brandon, who was the author of the book The Six Pillars of Low Self-Esteem, he said that any problem in our life, whether in our careers, in our relationships, in our own mental happiness, stems from the root of having low self-esteem. So it's pretty heavy stuff. So self-esteem is a component of an ongoing cycle. This cycle starts with us having negative life experiences, such as what? For example, earlier in our lives, the first contact that we have earlier in life is with our parents. So, how can our parents contribute to us having low self-esteem? Sometimes our parents have so much expectations of us that everything that we do and nothing we do is ever enough to meet their needs and their satisfactions. Or, sometimes when the parents get caught up in their work and they don't pay enough attention to the child, the child grows up thinking that his parents don't love him, right? 
and this leads to the, the child having low self-esteem. Later, we engage in our school life. In school, there is always that person who gets 100% in everything, who all the teachers love, right? Or there's that clique, the plastics, the people who look perfect, who dress well. Or there's that socialite, the person who makes friends wherever he goes. So you're sitting there and thinking, how can I not compare myself to these people? In school, there's also the subject of bullying. A person who is considered weird or an outcast is always physically and mentally bullied by a person who is bigger or who thinks he is better than you. So this person who is being bullied will grow up having low self-esteem. Abuse, like I said, can be in the form of bullying, or it can be from our parents, or it can be in the form of sexual abuse, which has been reported in many researches to be a direct cause of having low self-esteem. So these are earlier in life. Later, when we grow and become independent and have our own careers, we may find ourselves unsuccessful in this career. I've worked so hard, but now I look around and I see my peers, they're excelling, they're more successful, they're reaping the fruits of their success, while you are sitting stuck, unable to pinpoint where did I go wrong. So you end up having low self-esteem. Or maybe in relationships. A relationship failure, it can be just a simple breakup, or a divorce, or a product of cheating. So we're sitting, unable to help ourselves from thinking, what does this person have that we don't have? Why did they choose this person over us? Or it may be other things, such as being a dark-skinned girl in a country that I think favors light-skinned girls. Or... <laughs> Sorry, just had to say that. Or being overweight, which is a problem that I personally had or failing in exams repetitively, rep repeating a year maybe, or being of a certain race, or being of a certain socioeconomic status, you can't help but compare yourself and have low self-esteem. So all of these negative life experiences translate into us having negative core beliefs that we have about ourselves. Such as what? Such as, I am not as, as pretty as so-and-so, I am not as smart as so-and-so. I am not as successful. I am not as wealthy as so-and-so. So what we, what we do is we resort to unhelpful rules that we think are going to help us. So if I don't think that I'm pretty enough, I'm going to say to myself that I have to be the prettiest. I have to be the skinniest. I have to be the smartest. I have to be the most successful and have the most money. These unhelpful rules lead us to unhelpful behaviors. For example, if I believe myself to be overweight, and I have this nagging thing in my brain that I have to be the skinniest, I would end up being anorexic or bulimic, which is unhealthy. Or if I don't believe myself to be pretty, then I will dabble to unnecessary and multiple surgical procedures to look like this person. Or if I'm not as successful and as wealthy as so-and-so, and I have this belief that I have to be the most successful, then I will work, overwork myself into a mental exhaustion. So these unhelpful behaviors, when we find out that they didn't work, all they do is emphasize the already negative core beliefs that we have about ourselves. So when you turn on your TV, or you open a magazine, or you go to the movies, what do you see on that screen? perfection. That person standing in front of you is perfect. He looks perfect, he has money, and you see them in the movies and in the magazines. But these celebrities are humans. They also had a childhood. They had life experiences. They weren't born this pretty. They weren't born, born this successful. I would like to quote a woman who we see almost on a daily basis in movies carrying herself with such confidence and such pride. Her career spanned over a decade, and she said that I have so much wrong with me, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable to me that she thinks there's so much wrong with her. I mean, look at her. 
So anyone can have a problem with low self-esteem and not just us. Like other famous people, not just the Hollywood icons and the pop stars and everything. I want to bring up other famous people, people who change the world and contribute to a world being a better place. Albert Einstein, he was actually dyslexic, meaning that he had problem with his writing and reading earlier on in his life. Matter of fact, he actually used to fail some of his earlier on examinations. Can you believe Albert Einstein actually failed and examined his life? I can't even believe that he wasn't like the top of his class, let alone failing an exam. So he had a problem with his low self-esteem and he tackled it. Which brings me to the topic of how we can tackle our low self-esteem. But before I come to the steps, I just would like to mention a few past efforts that I think are really important and need to be mentioned. I came across this online journal. It's it was talking about how in 1992, in the Museum of Science and Industry, they came up with this idea that I know this museum would always host the children and have children field trips come to the museum. So they came up with this brilliant idea of making a star-shaped mirror. And this mirror would attract the child, and it's like flowery and, and, and lights and stuff. So the child would come and stand in front of this mirror. And the mirror, a voice from the mirror would ask them, do you like what you see in this mirror? And there is a yes button and a no button. So if the child pressed no, he was being punished by this voice in the mirror. If he pressed yes, he was rewarded by music and candy. So it is a great effort to be made. In the same year, the high self-esteem company, corporation, they came up with a doll. And they called it Happy to Be Me doll. As you can see, it's fuller meaning thicker and shorter than the average Barbie dolls that we have and that set believes in our minds that we should be tall and skinny and perfect and light-skinned and whatever. So this happy-to-be-me doll was introduced to the children, to the young girls, to make them accept their average sizes and not having to fit into a pop star box. But coming to the six steps or commandments that I came up with, um, I distributed a questionnaire earlier uh, about your low self-esteem. Who here got less than 30 results? Okay, so um, obviously you have low self-esteem. So uh, I will show you the six steps that helped me and hopefully can help you tackle your low self-esteem. First of all, you have to know the cause of your low self-esteem. You have to address it publicly. You have to know whether it was earlier in life or later. And this is the most important step. Secondly, imagine that you're not in this auditorium, that you're in a windy place. And to your right side, there is a palm tree. Just imagine, just bear with me. There is a palm tree on your right side, and there is an oak tree to your left. And the wind is blowing. So if you can notice how the wind will blow through the palm tree, it's the, the palm tree is actually being very flexible and not being phased by this wind. It's bending in the direction of the wind and letting the wind pass without anything. But the oak tree, it's fighting. It's making noises with the wind. It's like angry. So in life, the motto is, in life, when life blows at you like the wind, don't be like the oak tree. Be flexible. Be like the palm tree. Turn on your light switch. Just like a light switch, it has a head that moves up and down when we apply the pressure to it. So we also have heads that move up and down. So a person who has low self-esteem always has their head down, looking down, and their lights turned off. So turn on this light switch. Do something daring. Do something different. Wear something new. And this is bad advice for children, but talk to a stranger. Say hello, so what? See how daring and liberating that is. Reboot your mind. This is a concept that I borrowed from a certain gentleman known as Jim Fannin. He was the author of the book, The Pebble in the Shoe. Jim Fannin is an athletic coach. He works with athletes, soccer players, football players, baseball players, tennis, everything. But his concept is he focuses equally on the athleticism and the mental health of the athlete, because he believes that this is the key to winning. So 
His concept was, when we open our computer and our computer's processor is open and we have so many programs running at the same time, the computer slows down, right? And freezes. So what do we do? We restart. We reboot. The computer shuts down for a few seconds. And when it opens, you have a fresh open screen, a fresh start. So just like the computer's processor is our brain. When we overload our brain with negative thoughts about ourselves, it slows us down in our lives. So what we should do is reboot and restart. Matter of fact, and this is very exciting, is that Jim Fanning actually tried this maneuver in one of his athletes on the mound during the game. When this athlete was having trouble concentrating on the game because he was overloading his mind with ideas of failure and that he's going to fail and not succeed. So he stopped the game and he went to this person and he made him reboot and they actually ended up winning the championship game for that year. So it's a great concept. Flashbacks of the future. When we lay down in our bed, we think about everything that happened during the day. A person with low self-esteem will always think about the bad things. Oh, why did I say this? Why did I do this? Why did this person say this? And being very paranoid and having pessimistic views about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be very bad. I don't want to get up tomorrow. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. So tonight, when you lay down in your bed, I want you to think about the good things that happened. Forget about the bad things. And think about all the achievements that you're going to do tomorrow. Lastly, there is always a person who is the reason behind us having low self-esteem. There is always a person who hurt us. And there, this person, you're thinking in your mind that, why should I forgive this person? I want them to drown in their guilt. I, every time I see them, I'm just going to stare at them and be mean to them. But really, the only person who is drowning is you. Because these people are walking around this earth. They seriously don't care about you. They're walking and, ha yeah, and continuing their lives without you. While you're emotionally stuck and not able to engage in your life and in your daily activities as well as you would have done if you forgave this person. Forgiving yeah, is the key. If, even if you were victimized earlier in your lives, don't, be, don't play the victim role. Always be your own hero. When you have low self-esteem, it is parallel to you having low power. And imagine how much power you will have when you forgive a person. Trust me, this person who has hurt you and anyone else you will meet in your life is going to have much respect for you. So forgive. Thank you.